This was very disappointing to me. As a matter of fact, we had boxed all of those cameras up and they're, they're here and we're preparing to ship them back. Our board is going to meet tomorrow night at their monthly meeting and they'll, they'll provide all the wisdom that I need. I'm so glad, but I don't know what to do. I've got God on a board. Amen. And how many of you know the Bible says there's wisdom in a multitude of counselors? And, and they're going to help me as we walk through making the right decision. But, but I want you to understand something. There was a few times this week I said, God, would you like to tell me what's going on here? I simply don't understand. Can I tell you right now that I could spend all of my time trying to figure this out. You say, Pastor, why'd you share that with us? Well, you didn't have to share that because I'm trying to be real and vulnerable with you and tell you that you are nowhere that I'm not and that I'm nowhere that you're not. We're in the same boat. Every one of us in this room has disappointing things happen. And the truth of the matter is, I can't figure this out. I, I, we don't have $6,000 to pay for these cameras. And I'm not telling you that so you'll give us money. I'm just telling you the truth. And if we have to ship them back, so be it. But I'm going to tell you right now that God told us to do this. And here's the bottom line. I don't know how he's going to do this, but God's got a plan that's bigger than somebody else. It's bigger than my plan. It's bigger than your plan. It's his plan. And all I can do right now is trust in my God. Are you with me? Now, how many of you know that's the best place to be? It's trusting in God. Now, the, the truth, hey, some of you said you have flown. How many of you have ever flown an airplane at night? Let me see your hands right now. Have you ever flown an airplane at night? Now, I don't know if you think about this much, but when I get through telling you this, you probably may never fly an airplane at night again. But are you aware that when airplanes are flying at night, uh, they don't have headlights so they can see where they're going? Go to the third cumulus cloud and hang a left. Go two miles to the next thunderstorm and they're right. They, they, they don't navigate like that. In cloudy weather and at night, there is only one way to fly an airplane, and that is by instrument rules. And what that means is the pilot could actually close the cockpit window if he wanted to because he's not using that to navigate. He's looking down at a set of gauges. How many of you are never flying at night again? Let me see your hands. Yeah, He's looking at a set of gauges. He's looking at a set of instruments. And, and I want to help you with something. And, and this maybe will make you feel a little bit better. The truth of the matter is, is that those gauges, is that those instruments are thousands of times more reliable than that pilot. I don't care who he is. The best pilot in the world. His best sense of direction is thousands of times less reliable than those gauges and instruments that he has. As a matter of fact, what in the world am I say? Those gauges and instruments are millions of times more reliable than the best pilot's pilot's intuition. I'm telling you that right now. And here's the truth. God or is those instruments in your life. God is those gauges in your life. And God knows where you're going. And God knows how to get you there. And what He wants you to do is stop trying to stare out the window and figure it out. Your faith and trust in Him. Number two, write this one down. You need to trust God when you're faced with a decision. Hello? Anybody here have to make a decision right now? It is so good to see Alan and Amanda Barker from Kansas with us this morning. Welcome, guys. We're glad you're here this morning. They're right back here. I'm embarrassing the life out of them. It's good to see you guys. Several weeks ago, I got a, an email. They had emailed me and said, Hey, preacher, we're moving to West Palm Beach and we, we're looking for a church. And we rarely get emails from people in Kansas who are moving to West Palm Beach. And we have the best lizards in the world, but most people in Kansas don't want to move here for lizards. And, and so I got this email, I got forwarded to me, and, and we responded and answered and said, oh, it's great. And the more we corresponded and the more we got to talking, the more I realized that these guys were in the throes of the same place I was three years ago when God started burdening my heart about moving to West Palm Beach. And they were trying to make a decision about coming here and moving here as God was directing them. Hello? Hello? Alan, is it okay if I share this? Alan, Alan had to quit a full-time job in Kansas to take a part-time job in Florida. But now remember, the lizards are better here than they are there, right? He had to do that. He had to know this was God. He had to know he was making the right decision. He had to, they had to pack everything up. They had to put their house on the market. They had to, my faith, that I followed them this week. I, I wasn't in Kansas, but I followed them on Facebook. And every, every few hours, I'd get an update. We're in Georgia. We're in Kentucky. We're finally in Florida. And yesterday, there was one that popped up and says, we're here. We're, we're headed for the beach. I knew they were here. Amen. 
the new they found their baby. Now, now here's the deal. These guys had to make a decision several weeks ago in their life that was a hard decision to make. Are you with me? Now, can I tell you, sometimes there's going to be big decisions like that, moving decisions, marrying decisions, decisions about your job and your career. These are biggies. These are the whoppers. And I don't think there's anybody in this room who would argue with me or disagree with me when it comes to the big decisions of your life. You certainly want and need God's input into those big decisions. How many of you agree with me on that? When you need God's help. But can I take it a step further? That, that the Bible doesn't say that we're only to trust God for the big decisions like moves and who to marry and what job to take. But the truth is, you and I need to trust God in every decision in our life. We are to trust God with the big stuff and with the little stuff. And here's the cool thing. God wants us to know that He is with us and that He will help us make the right decision. Listen to what Solomon wrote. In all of your ways. How I many of you know he didn't say in some of your ways, in most of your ways. He said in all of your ways, acknowledge Him. In other words, God wants to be involved in every decision of your life. Several, several months ago, my daughter graduated from high school. And she immediately began to seek God and pray and say, God, what do you have for me next? My whole family started praying. We had everybody praying. And I had her in my, my daily prayer sheet, the, my daily prayer reminder. And, and I had this down. I was praying for God's protection and God's blessing on my daughter. But I was praying every day, God, would you lead her and give her confidence about her future? How many of you know sometimes we're praying prayers that we really don't want God to answer? How many of you And so we've been praying. We've been seeking God. Now, we, we have prayed for days and months and weeks, and we weren't hearing anything. Anybody besides me? I mean, I've been very vulnerable with you and very transparent with you. Anybody besides me uh, ever sometimes feel like that you're asking God for an, an answer and He's giving you absolutely nothing? It's like you, there's not even any crickets. I mean, it's just silence. And so we went for, for months and didn't hear anything. And I don't know if you're wired like me, but this is kind of the way, you know, sometimes that, that I think and sometimes this thinking is really out there. I, I said, you know, God, if you don't tell us what to do, then we'll just, we can make this decision, God. I, I got that. Say amen. I, God, if you don't want to tell me what to do, then I can figure this out on my own. How many of you know that spells T-R-O-U-B-L-E? We try to figure it out, and we can't. And so we hadn't heard anything. My daughter hadn't heard anything. And so we started making plans. And she would just stay with us another year. And she would take some classes online and make some classes over here at the Palm Beach State College. And, but her heart's desire was to pursue ministry. So this summer, she, she packed all of her stuff up. She went away to serve in uh, junior high camp and youth camp and kids camp for three weeks to be there to minister to students and to be there to pour into their lives to do ministry. And so she went away. And before she left, she told me this. As we were taking the airport. She said, Dad, I want to tell you something. She said, I believe in God that by the time this summer is over, I'm going to know absolutely for sure what God wants me to do. And how many of you know, I wanted to say, I know what God wants you to do. God wants you to live with me until I'm alive. I kept my mouth shut and I said, honey, I'll be praying with you. And she got on that plane and she flew north and long story short, she served two weeks of camp and my wife and I went up and the second week of our vacation was to serve a kid's camp alongside of our daughter. We ministered to little kids and poured into their life and when I got there that week and we got together with Sharia, she, she came up to me and she said, Dad, I need to tell you something. She said, I'm a little frustrated. I said, well, what's going on, sweetheart? She said, I've been praying and I told you that I felt like God was going to speak to me before the summer was over. And she said, Dad, time is running out. She said, I've got five days left of this summer. And, and I don't know what I'm going to do. And I said, what we're going to do is we're, I was having a spiritual moment. How many of you understand? <laughs> I said, what we're going to do is we're going to trust God. And I said, it's not Friday yet. And when Friday comes, we're going to know what to do. And God's going to speak to you. And I just believe that. And I went away praying, God, just tell her to come back home with me. <laughs> and Friday came. And God spoke to my daughter's heart. And this coming Thursday, my daughter leaves to go to Bible college to pursue ministry and to become the woman of God that God wants her to be.